but they have basically more or less the same idea as manually zooming in. They just do this in an automatic way. So they decide where to focus on. What of the approach, some of the approaches that we have are either Bayesian search, we have evolutionary computing based search, we have gradient based search, and also early stopping based search. You can find even more of them out there. This is a really active area of research. So there is more approaches and techniques being offered or proposed basically every year. So um, there, are, there is a lot of experimentation. There is a lot of experimental libraries out there also, but I want to talk to you about the most promising ones or the ones that people use the most in the industry or out there. Evolutionary computing ones are the ones that I find the most interesting. I've actually taken a class on evolutionary computing when I was doing my master's, and it's a very interesting um, programming logic. So what you do is you basically approach your whole program while you're trying to optimize something. So basically evolutionary computing's goal is to do global optimization. You create, you initialize a population, basically like you, you think of them as populations. So our, in, right now our population is going to be, one individual is going to be one setting for our hyperparameters. So you create a lot of these um, individuals in this population and then you evaluate them based on how much error that they're giving you. And then you are basically going to eliminate some of them randomly, but some of them also based on natural selection. So the worst error ones are going to be eliminated. And then you're going to have some randomization included in there with the mutation. And you're going to do this whole uh, approach again, except for the initialization. You're going to have some selection and then some mutation that is randomization and then some selection again until you find some values that are really good for your model. But you don't have to implement it yourself, of course. There is already a library for that. SK Learn Deep is one of the libraries that you can use to uh, adapt evolutionary computing techniques in your hyperparameter search. Then we have Bayesian search. Bayesian search is basically the closest thing to doing zooming in. Uh, what it does is basically tries to understand a probabilistic model of the relationship between the hyperparameters and the cost function. So let's say like the example that I've given you, uh, this is the cost function as it gets bluer, this is a lower cost and the red ones are really high cost. And these are the hyperparameters. Bayesian search basically tries to understand what this relationship looks like, what this graphic or the space would look like, and then focus on the ones that are, uh, that it thinks probabilistically thinks that is going to give it the lowest cost. So that's how that one works. Uh, for the libraries that you can use, you can have, you can use Spearmint uh, or Scikit Optimize that also has a Bayesian search um, implementation. Then we have gradient based search. Um, gradient based search basically takes this trying to find the optimal grade, uh, hyperparameter settings problem like the learning problem that we have. So you know what we did was to initialize weights and biases randomly on our network and then we look at the cost and then we see how these parameters are affecting the cost and then we update these parameters. So basically it does more or less the same thing for the hyperparameters. It uh, looks at how they affect the cost and tries to update them accordingly to make the cost lower. Um, there are some libraries that you can use to do try gradient based search, even though this sounds very common sense or really promising, there is not actually that much attention on this. Um, but of course, if you're interested, you can go and try it out. The library that you can use for that is AdaTune. That is actually from Amazon AWS Labs. And then we have early stopping based search. Uh, so there are different types of algorithms in early stopping based search, but basically their goal is to stop the unpromising runs earlier so that you can spend more resources on the settings that are more promising. Some of the um, examples of algorithms that are in this class are successive halving, or there is a synchronous successive halving or a hyperband. And hyperband actually is a library also that you can go and try out for yourself uh, today. Um, there are some other libraries that I haven't mentioned as part of any specific uh, algorithm. There's hyperopt. Uh, and then you have Copt and Hyperast basically built on Hyperopt to you to be used with Keras. You have Talos, uh, Keras Tuner obviously works with Keras, and then you have Sherpa. And most of these uh, libraries 
are implementing a bunch of different uh, algorithms. That's why I didn't specifically mention them in any one of them. But on top of these, you actually also have hyperparameter tuning services. So this might not really apply to you, will probably not apply to you if you're just an individual trying to learn deep learning uh, for yourself or maybe to get a job in the future. But if you're working currently at a company that wants to try deep learning, there are some professional services out there that does your hyperparameter tuning for you. So these are some of the examples. If you want any of these links, by the way, you can get the, the slides under this video. I will uh, make sure to attach it there so you can, uh, you do not have to type all of this, you can just click it. All right, so out of everything that we learned, all of the random search, grid search, more sophisticated ones, what should you do? If you are a person who is starting with deep learning, building your first models, and you have gotten to the point that you realize you need to do um, hyperparameter tuning, what should you do? So first of all, I think you definitely should start with random search first and see how much, how far it can bring you, because it could really be surprising to see how far you can get with just using random search. And then if you see that you are not uh, satisfied with it, or you want to just try a little bit more, you can definitely expand, extend to Bayesian search. There is a lot of implementations of Bayesian search out there, and there is a lot of support also on kind of help on how you can implement and properly do Bayesian search. But if you want to do, if you want to go further, if you want to get a little bit more experimental, or just to try things just to expand your knowledge or skills, you can definitely go try out some others, for example, evolutionary ones or early stopping ones or maybe even some other ones that you see uh, that are out there that you're interested in. As long as there is a library for it, it will be very easy for you to implement it anyways. Uh, but I would definitely not suggest trying to implement any of these search algorithms uh, by yourself. There is a reason these are being done uh, by professional teams of uh, programmers. Um, but basically, that's it when it comes to hyperparameter tuning. I hope everything was clear. If there are any questions, don't forget to uh, leave a comment. And with this, we can go to the next module.